Hello everyone, my name is Farshid. Today I'll be presenting AutoRing, our work on precise electromagnetic finger tracking for mobile device input. First, I want to thank my cool primary author, Eric Wittmeyer, and my advisor, Shurik Patel. New computing platforms such as head-mounted displays for virtual and augmented reality have the potential to change the way we work, play, and communicate. More and more, our computer services are not limited to the smartphone screens in our hands, but are placed ubiquitously throughout the environment. Wearables are a great solution for these input devices as they are continuously available, but most are focused on detecting events, like tabs, flakes, or other gestures. These are useful, but we need to complement these gestures with precise continuous tracking for pointing. To enable precise tracking, we've built AutoRing. It's a high-precision, short-range electromagnetic tracking technique that goes beyond discrete events and tracks the pose of the ring with respect to the span in real time. So we can use this to reconstruct hand pose. Or we can build continuous input applications like drawing on top of it. Now let's talk and see how this works. Auto ring consists of a wristband, something that could be integrated into a smartwatch or other variables, or and a ring, much like today's smart ring. Our goal here is to enable interactions in a manner that is subtle, portable, precise, and does not require user calibration. Before we get into the interactions that we enable, I want to review how electromagnetic tracking works. When we pass a current through a coil, it generates the magnetic field in a direction normal to the plane of the coil. When you put another coil, here we call this the receiver coil, within this field, the voltage in the receiver coil is related to the orientation with respect to the field. If the receiver coil is aligned with the field, you measure the maximum voltage. If the receiver coil is orthogonal to the field, you measure nothing in the receiver coil. Taking a closer look at the hardware, on the left, you can see the ring. We literally wrapped 800 turns of thin wire around a 3D printed frame and put a small PCB on top to generate the signal. The ring is actually a very small battery powered coil that emits a signal magnetic field around the hand and uses just a couple of milliwatts, so enough for about a day's worth of usage. On the wristband, you can see the three sensors here. They're low profile sensors that contain three axes each and measure the magnetic field at three different locations. Since we know the geometry of these sensors, we can estimate the pose of the ring. We also have two controller boards that handle signal processing and sampling. For more details, please take, please take a look at the paper. Here, we show the raw data that the wristband sends back to the PC. As you see, it's quite sensitive to the finger movement. Now, how can we relate these measurements to the ring pose? To do that, we start with a dipole model that calculates the sensor measurement as a function of the ring pose for each sensor location. Then, we use a nonlinear optimizer to solve the best position and orientation, giving a set of sensor values. Now, however, these sensor and amplitude demodulation pipeline do not represent a perfect measurement of the magnetic field due to sensor parameters including noise, gain, biases, and etc. That's why we need a calibration process. We will learn these one-time factory calibration parameters empirically by collecting and using data from an optical motion capture system. We place IR reflectoactive markers on the ring and the wristband to get the ground truth and we use that to learn the forward model. To evaluate the calibration, we look at the correlation between what the sensor measured and what the forward model estimates. These should be perfectly correlated with a perfect calibration. Without any calibration, as you see, the measured sensor value does not correlate with the simulated sensor values. After calibration, though, data measured by the auto ring system matches the synthetic data. To evaluate our system, we recruited 14 participants and asked them to wave their hands and fingers for 10 minutes. For 10 minutes, in this evaluation, we wanted to understand how well the calibration model tracks the ring. And here are the results. You can see a representative few seconds of 3D positional tracking for two of the participants. The takeaway here is that our ring tracks the pose of the ring with millimeter resolution accuracy. One thing to focus here is that even for the user on the right, which has a relatively higher error, the relative motion is still tracked with respect to the ground truth. 
For more details, again, please take a look at the paper. Now, I'd like to show you some of the interaction our ring enables. As we saw earlier, a user can precisely point while keeping their arm rested at their side. We can leverage the pose estimate to fit a kinematic model of the hand. This does require knowledge of two bone length, which can be learned automatically. Our ring can also enable interactions with virtual objects. One interesting aspect about ordering is that due to its high bandwidth, we can measure events such as taps or flicks, which are immediately distinguishable due to their broadband spectrogram and higher energy. By combining ordering with an arm or wrist tracking solution, pointing can be done in absolute coordinate system. Here we show a drawing example using wrist-only motion from the HTC Vive tracker on the bottom and wrist plus R ring on the top, you can see that R ring results in a significantly more useful signal. And with that, I want to thank all of you for listening. And again, thank my co-authors. And we'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you.